name's Will, and this is Will to Read. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the short story collection Intimations of Death by Felix Timmerman. I didn't know anything about Timmerman prior to buying this book. I just liked the description on the back and thought the stories would be some fun old-school gothic horror, which is what it ended up being. But before we get too into it, let's read the summary. A boy's mother lies upstairs, seriously ill, and in every crash of thunder or hollow chime of the clock, he seems to hear a portent of her death. A scholar of the occult finds his marriage threatened by horrifying and otherworldly noises emanating from the cellar. During a plague outbreak, a gravedigger accidentally prepares one too many graves and becomes obsessed with the thought that the final grave will be his own. A haunted man, seeking refuge in a monastery, is convinced that death itself stalks him in the building's lonely halls. When a suicide pact goes awry, a man believes the ghost of his vengeful lover has returned to destroy him. These are the plots of the five tales in Intimations of Death, available at last in English for the first time. There's not really much I can add there without giving way too much, so yeah, let's get right into threads. These stories were written following Timmerman's experience with a near-fatal illness, and this permeates throughout them. All five stories center around either some foreboding feeling that death is around the corner, or some sense that one has escaped death, and that resulting in some other tragedy. So these stories, in a way, come off to me as Timmerman dealing with the trauma of almost dying. The central message being, death comes for us all. It's inevitable, and it stalks us constantly around every corner. To put it succinctly, these stories are the meditations of a young man coming to grips with his own mortality. Huh, that was shorter than normal. Though the main thing I want to showcase about these stories is Timmerman's writing style. Uh, I know that since this is a translation, this is also partially the work of the translator, Paul Vincent, who did a beautiful job, and I want to make sure he gets his due as well. This book oozes gothic imagery and has many descriptions that I think give people like Poe and Machen a run for their money. Here's the description of a road from the first story, The Mourner. The avenue served no purpose. It lay there like something superfluous in the world, and it was like a being that lived, advanced towards a goal, but had felt how useless and unattainable it was and had stopped. So our house was lost in the infinity of earth and sky. But what had a particularly frightening effect on my mind in this thickly overarched lane was that right opposite our house there rose a white wall, above which an army of black poplars raised their black crowns, which in their thick green foliage hid a deserted convent. The rooms and the church were empty, but owls and ravens, rats and bats, let their swift shadows glide across the white walls. This reminds me that a big thing in all of these stories, besides the presence of death, is the presence of monasteries or abbeys. I don't think they're there to say anything particular about religion, but they do add to the overall Gothic atmosphere, especially given the commonness which monks in particular appear in classic Gothic novels. They also add to the presence of death by reminding one of religion, and thus the afterlife. Another thing which I found rather interesting and unique about this book was the framing of the stories. Three of the five are framed as the narrator being told the story by another person, meaning that we are hearing about these happenings secondhand, participating in a kind of game of telephone. As stories tend to get told over and over, certain elements, usually the more sensational, tend to get emphasized, and the less sensational tend to drop to the wayside. We thus get the impression that we are being told a distorted version of these events. As John Howard put it in his introduction, Timmerman is fond of putting the reader at something of a distance from the events recounted. 
as if they were seen by the reader being made to gaze through the wrong end of a telescope. This only adds to the feeling of unease and puts the reader in a state of questioning what to believe and what not to. Now's the part where I have to give some criticism to this book. These stories have some amazing beginning and middle parts, but quite a few of them, I think, had underwhelming endings. Perhaps I was getting too wrapped up in the exceptional prose and expected too big of an ending for them, but I found some quite disappointing, particularly the mourner. I will say I found the atmosphere of the seventh grave, the white vase, and the unknown really well done, and I was intrigued enough by the events of the cellar that I briefly contemplated doing a video exclusively about it. Brief spoiler warning, go to this timestamp if you don't want to hear it. So, my theory about the ending is that I think that Mina had an affair with Nand, and her suddenly wanting to shag Herman was an attempt to cover up the fact she'd become pregnant, and her death was a result of not being able to deal with the shame following Herman's insistent refusals to shag her. Okay. Now that my pet theory about an obscure short story from over a hundred years ago is out there, I think it's time to wrap things up. I'm not sure what the next video will be. I'm getting a bit busier with my internship and my summer class will have started by the time this video is up, so it might end up being about a movie or maybe a comic I really like since it seemed like people responded well to me talking about comics in the wrap-up video. I'll figure it out later. Hey. It's me later. Um, the next video is going to be an introduction to poetry comics, so get excited for that. But for now, my name's Will, and this has been Will to Read. See you next time.